Good afternoon and thank you for attending police headquarters. My name is Constable Carolyn DeClute and I am here today to introduce Detective Leslie Dunkley of Homicide. He will be updating you on homicide number 29 of 2018. Thank you, good afternoon, thank you for coming. So today I'm gonna to release some images of the suspect vehicle as you see here uh, and some video surveillance footage from the area where the incident occurred. The images you're gonna see on the video are not sequential, they're clips uh, depicting the suspect vehicle uh, in the area at the time of the uh, incident. I'll provide you a narrative of the direction of travel uh, shortly. So through our investigation so far, we believe we've identified the model and the suspect vehicle, sorry, identify the make and the model of the suspect vehicle. We're still hoping to locate and identify the occupant and the motor vehicle. We're appealing to witnesses to come forward who may have had contact with either the victim's vehicle or the suspect vehicle prior to the accident. I will now provide you with a background of the incident. So on Monday, May the 7th, 2018, at approximately 11.55 a.m., officers were dispatched to the, for a motor vehicle collision in the area of Kipling and Longfield Road. Upon arrival, the motor vehicle was located on the front lawn of a residential property. Paramedics attended to the driver, who was VSA, and quickly identified that his injuries were more consistent with gunshot wounds than a collision. He was taken to hospital on an emergency run where he was admitted to hospital in critical condition. The homicide squad began monitoring the investigation. And yesterday, the man succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced in hospital. And we assumed a carriage of the investigation. I can now confirm that an autopsy has been performed and the cause of death is determined to be gunshot wounds. The victim has been identified as Christopher Reed, He's 38 years old, off the GTA. So through our investigation, we've conducted a canvas of the area looking for witnesses and surveillance footage. Um, a review of the video footage uh, we've identified so far, uh, the make and model of the suspect vehicle. The vehicle is believed to be a late model 2008 or newer uh, BMW X6, four-door white in color. From, uh, <clears throat> from what we can tell from review of the video, surveillance footage, and information from the witnesses, it appears there was only one occupant in the suspect vehicle. Um, both vehicles, so the, the suspect vehicle and the victim vehicle, uh, we can tell you traveled uh, eastbound from the 427-401 and Eglinton area, eastbound uh, in tandem with each other, with the victim vehicle trailing approximately 12 to 14 seconds behind <clears throat> Both vehicles proceeded to turn right, which is southbound onto Lloyd Manor Road, approaching Longfield Road. Uh, both vehicles turned left to go eastbound on Longfield Road, and a short time later, the suspect vehicle came to a stop on Longfield Road, in the middle of the road, at which time the occupant of the suspect vehicle, we believe to be the driver, uh, opened fire striking the victim who was still seated in his motor vehicle. Again, we believe there was only one occupant in the suspect vehicle, and we know there is one occupant in, the, in our victim's vehicle. Our victim's vehicle is identified as a 2017 Hyundai Elantra, uh, four-door black. Immediately after the shooting, uh, the victim's vehicle fled the scene continuing eastbound on Longfield Road and <clears throat> jumped the curb and came to a standstill approximately 150 meters away from, from the incident at Stanthorpe Court is where it came to a standstill. The suspect vehicle followed behind and then fled, uh, again, followed behind eastbound on Longfield Road and then proceeded to go southbound on Kipling Avenue and that was the last we saw of that motor vehicle. So again, we're continuing to canvas the area for video and witnesses, and we're asking anyone who may have witnessed the incident uh, to call the Homicide Squad or Crime Stoppers. As part of our investigation, we're looking to speak with registered owners of um, 
this particular uh, model of BMW um, that fits the description. Any questions? So, Detective Dunkley, where was the shooting exactly? How far away from where that car eventually crashed? So the shooting was approximately 150 meters uh, east of uh, where the vehicle, uh, the resting place, stand toward. Did you believe this was a target? Again, it's hard to say. Um, again, we have video of our victim vehicle trailing behind this particular car, and the suspect vehicle came to a stop, at which time our victim's vehicle pulled alongside, and at that point there was a pause, and that's when the uh, shots were fired. So did the shots come through the, the passenger window of the vehicle? That's correct. So the shots came through from the driver's side of uh, the suspect vehicle through the passenger side of the victim vehicle, striking the victim windows on his right side. The windows down the vehicle. So the windows would have been down on the victim vehicle. How many gunshot wounds So I can say more than one. So the victim is known to police, and that's, uh, that's all I'm going to say at this time. Do you believe that the suspect and the victim were, uh, have had an interaction prior to the shooting? And do you believe that the victim was aware he was being followed? So there's no way for us to know other than what we see on the, on the video. So anything else will be speculation. Well, what do we see on the video? Can you just kind of take us through it, please? Yeah, so the, I mean, the video, so this is uh, a, a series of clips. It's not in sequential. Uh, it's, it's different, uh, so this, well, it's hard to say because it's, it's looped right now, but where you see the suspect vehicle make the left turn, that's onto Longfield uh, Road. Um, off of what street? So it's off of Lloyd Manor. Okay, so, Lloyd Manor. So, so Lloyd Manor runs north-south, south, left turn, which is eastbound on uh, Longfield, and that's where the shooting happens, is on Longfield. Um, and then the vehicle comes to a stop about 150 meters at uh, Stan, Stanthorpe Place. So. so we've recovered some evidence at the scene is, is all I can tell you. How many times do you believe that Mr. Reed was shot? I can tell you more than one. I, 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 I won't give you a specific number at this time. Can you say how many times the gun fired? <laughs> Again, uh, there's several reports from different witnesses in terms of the number of shots that were fired. So I can tell you multiple. Not at this time. You know, this is pretty brazen. We were there on Monday. It's the middle of the day. Um, a lot of families live in this area. People are out walking. Um, what are you looking for? What, what, what is it that, I mean, what, what can we do in a case like this to help? Yeah, again, uh, that's why I'm doing this press conference, is to appeal to witnesses who may have come in contact with uh, either vehicle um, on that particular day or since that time, up until now. Um, we're hoping, I mean, the suspect vehicle is very identifiable. You know, it's white, four-door BMW. It's pretty distinctive. So we're hoping that someone remembers or their memory can be jogged in, in terms of witnessing uh, the actual incident. As you can see in the video, there's several cars that are going that in and around the vehicles, both vehicles. Can you tell us what the victim was doing before this happened? Have you been able to talk to his family or people that we know? So we have. We have spoken to some individuals. We do know where he was intended to go. And we know where he was coming from. Um, there, there are some time gaps in between there, which we can't account for at this time. Uh, we're still investigating. Can you give, was he a father? Was he married? Can you give us a little bit of background on, on our victim? Um, so he was a father. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Can you tell us anything about where he was going that day? He was going to visit. Um, uh, he, he was going to visit relatives. Is what I can say. That's correct. Were the other windows down in the passenger of the victim's vehicle as well? So, not that I can, not, no, I don't, I don't believe so. So, might that suggest that he was having a conversation with the... Again, just, you know, from what we see on the video, which you don't have here in terms of the actual, when the vehicle pulls alongside, um, there was a brief pause. Um, but that window was down, say, the capacity window was only a little bit down, that may suggest that he was the driver. <clears throat> That's possible, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, right? I mean, you know, it was a nice day. He could have had his window down for her. They could have been down prior to that. We don't know. It's fair to, do you believe this is targeted? 
again, it's hard to say. We only know from what we see on the video. Um, it's, we don't know. We're still trying to find out. So what do you say to people in this neighborhood who are going to hear that this guy was being pursued, basically? And, uh, I, I mean, so, I mean there, it came in as a medical kind of, I mean, I can go for it. Yeah. I mean, the, the incident that happened, I don't believe, has anything to do with the neighborhood itself. There's no evidence at this time to indicate uh, that our, our victim was attending an address in that particular neighborhood. So as to why he took that route from Eglinton Avenue is unbeknownst to us. We don't know. It's possible he was trying to bruise the suspect vehicle? Well, from what we see, I mean, the victim vehicle was trailing behind. So... Tra no, the suspect vehicle. Sorry. No, the victim vehicle was behind the suspect vehicle. Oh, he was behind us? So That's what I said, yeah. When did he pull in front of us? So he never pulled in front of him at any time. No, he pulled alongside him, and that's where the shooting happened. So you believe the victim was actually following the suspect for some time before the shooting? You know, whether he just happened to be going in the same direction or not, it's hard to say. Uh, what we know is it was about a 12 to 14 second gap between the victim vehicle and the suspect vehicle. But the victim vehicle was behind. The victim vehicle okay. was behind. Did I not say that earlier? I, I, I was confused. I did say that, right? Yeah. Um, and they came to a stop. The, the suspect vehicle came to a stop first. And the victim vehicle pulled alongside. Uh, as I mentioned, the passenger side of the victim vehicle pulled alongside the driver's side of the suspect vehicle. And that's when a sh that's when a shooting happened. Well, again, you, uh, you know, I mean, I'm going to say, you know, you can judge from, say, Eglinton and the 401 to, to that location, which, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. And at this point, no Depending on, sorry? No, I was going to say, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's no indication that they stopped at a traffic light, so it's strictly from 401 and Eglinton. To that location. And right now, there is no clear indication that the victim and the suspect knew each other. We have no evidence of that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Well, next we're going to continue to. Um, we, there's still some more video that we have to uh, go through. Obviously, the vehicle fled southbound on Kipling Avenue. So we're continuing to review video from uh, uh, Southbound on Kipling and residential video in the area. Um, we're appealing to witnesses to come forward who, again, uh, it's a very distinctive vehicle and we're hoping that uh, whether some people had dash cams on their, uh, on their cars and we're able to capture this vehicle, whether something happened prior to uh, the shooting where the vehicles are behind each other in tandem, um, we're interested to know. Okay. Again, no, we can't. No. I just know there was one occupant in the car. Okay. All right. That's correct.